Hello and welcome back. So what I want to talk to you about today is oscilloscope probes and in particular how to get them to measure accurately. And since it's a related topic, why the X1 setting on the probe always reduces the bandwidth. So just to show what I'm talking about, I got this little experiment going on here. So what I got here is the 2 volt peak to peak sine wave coming from the signal generator to which I have connected two identical probes. So they're the same manufacturer, they're just as unused. And well, none of them is showing me the correct value. One is showing me more, one is showing me less. So if you're curious about how to fix this issue, and more importantly, understand where it's coming from, then keep watching. So to understand the issue, First, we need to understand the equivalent circuit of the oscilloscope probe coupled with the measurement instrument to which it's connected to. Now, most oscilloscopes have an input resistance of 1 mega ohm coupled with an input capacitance of around 10 15 picofarads. It depends on the oscilloscope. Now, for my particular unit, this isn't really clearly defined anywhere. But anyway, the way that you get your division by 10, so the x10 effect of the probe, is because the probe has a resistance of 9 mega ohms. So by connecting the 9 mega ohm resistor in series with the 1 mega ohm of the oscilloscope, you get a divider by 10. But it's not that simple. Let me show you in a simulation. So what I got here is the equivalent circuit of the oscilloscope, so the 1 mega ohm with the small capacitance, and then my 9 mega ohm resistor from my probe. And if we run this thing and apply an input AC signal to the circuit, we see that on the oscilloscope side, we do get our minus 20 decibels, so the division by 10, but that only works up until a few kilohertz. Afterwards, the signal amplitude just drops down. And the reason why this is happening is because of this extra capacitor. Basically, what we have here is a low pass filter built with the 9 mega ohms and the 12 picofarads. And you cannot get a 100 megahertz bandwidth probe with this sort of circuit. So we must be missing something. Now, in reality, the 9 mega ohm resistor isn't just a resistor. There's also a bit of parallel capacitance going on. And by adding this, so this is in the order of again 10 to 15 picofarads, it is different from probe to probe. But by adding this, if we look at the response and compare it to our initial circuit, we see that we no longer have a low pass filter, we sort of built a high pass filter. So basically we got a capacitor divider in parallel with our resistor divider, and this is reducing our probe attenuation, but it's reducing it too much. So instead of going from 20 decibels lower, we go from 20 decibels higher. Now, in theory, you could choose just the right capacitor values to obtain a perfectly flat response, but in reality, that's not really the case. Main issue being that this capacitor should be much, much smaller, and anyway, both the capacitors have a bit of built-in tolerance, so you can't always obtain the correct values. Also, this capacitance in the oscilloscope is different from unit to unit. So one model of oscilloscope will have a certain value, different models might have completely different values. So you can't have a standard capacitor inside the probe that will fit any oscilloscope. Now the way to handle this is to add a bit of extra impedance on the oscilloscope side, which comes in the form of an RC compensation network. Now this is not built into the oscilloscope, but rather into the probe body. And the capacitor here is variable. So usually you have this opening inside of the oscilloscope probe and most probe sets also come with a little screwdriver to be able to fine tune this thing. This is basically how you compensate your probe to get it to show the correct value. Now by adding this compensation network, if we look at the response of the system, we see that it starts to become much, much flatter. So it's closer to 20 decibels and by fine tuning the value, so Maybe if I put a bit higher capacitance or a bit lower. By choosing the exact value, 
we start to get an almost perfect minus 20 decibel line. So the value is variable and will be set on each probe on each oscilloscope. But we still have this issue up here in the higher frequencies where again the system response starts to go up so we can't maintain our minus 20 decibel point. So there's still something missing from our model. And what that is, is the cable. So you might think that this is a typical coax cable, but it's actually a lossy transmission line. In other words, this cable has a defined high amount of series resistance. So for your typical probe, the series resistance might be in the order of 100 or 200 ohms. You can actually measure this by setting the probe to X1 because that switch simply bypasses the X10 divider and you can measure the resistance of the cable. Now by adding also the resistance of the transmission line, our final response becomes almost perfectly flat. So we're at minus 20 decibels plus minus very small amounts and then at higher frequencies the response starts to drop. So even with just some values thrown in there, this equivalent circuit has a bandwidth of more than 1 gigahertz. So this would be a very good oscilloscope probe. Now of course in reality this compensation network can be a bit more complicated. Certain probes have more than one tuning trimmer. Another thing that's missing from the model would be a tip capacitance. So the oscilloscope probe is not perfect, there's just a bit of extra capacitance. Other than the one bypassing the 9 megaohm resistor, this just adds to the total probe capacitance. I mean it's not really affecting the response of the circuit, it just adds a bit more load to the circuit that you're measuring. The final thing to mention is the X1 setting on the probe. Basically this acts like a short circuit around your X10 divider. So it short circuits the 9 megaohm resistor. Now if you look into the user manual of any probe, you will see that this X1 setting drastically reduces the bandwidth. So with X10 you have a bandwidth going up into the tens or hundreds of megahertz. With the X1 usually it's limited to below 10. So why does this happen? Well, if we check out our model, we see that we do get our zero decibel attenuation. So it is an X1 probe, it directly couples the input to the oscilloscope. But somewhere between 1 and 10 megahertz, the signal starts to drop off. Basically, what we have here again is a low pass filter. And the main elements of this low pass filter are the resistance in the transmission line, so the 100 ohms of the cable, coupled with the capacitance in the oscilloscope, so the 12 picofarads, and the 100 something picofarads that are in the compensation. These things together form our low pass filter, therefore the X1 setting drastically reduces our bandwidth. So now let's try to compensate my probes to get them to measure correctly. And we can do this by acting on the compensation capacitor. Since this is the only thing that's variable in the system, everything else has a fixed value. So there's two things that we could try to compensate the probes. I still have them connected to my initial 2 volt peak to peak signal. And we could use the sine wave to compensate the probe. So if I start to turn the compensation trimmer, we see that the probe's response changes and I can set it to almost 2 volts. But this would only work under a certain set of conditions. First of all, my 2 volt signal needs to be exactly 2 volts. And secondly, the resistor divider formed between the probes and the oscilloscope input resistance needs to be a division by exactly 10. Now in real life, you do want to have these properties achieved, but realistically, both the resistor in the probes and the one in the oscilloscope usually has at least a 1% tolerance. So with more expensive oscilloscopes, these resistors are more precise, but if you have a cheaper setup, then you will have certain tolerances built into the equipment. So the signal that you want to calibrate your oscilloscope probes should be one that contains both low frequency content and high frequency content so that you can calibrate both the response at high frequencies where the compensation pin comes into play and at low frequencies when only the resistor divider comes into play. And luckily 
almost all oscilloscopes come with this square wave output present on their body. So now if I connect one of my probes to this output and adjust the time base a bit, we can see that our reference 5 volt square wave doesn't really look like a square wave. We see that the probe is overcompensated, meaning that it's attenuating the signal and by adjusting the knob, the ideal signal shape that you would want to see is a perfect square wave. So what you want to have is not an undercompensated signal that attenuates high frequencies, but neither an overcompensated signal that boosts high frequencies, but rather you want a perfect square wave. So by fine tuning the value, we can get an almost perfect square wave from this. And now it's important to remember that even though I compensated the probe, it's only compensated for channel 2 of this piece of equipment. If I move it to a different channel or if I move it to a different oscilloscope, then you need to start this process all over again. So now that I move the probe to my first channel, we can see that it's just a little bit undercompensated. So the signal is just a little bit attenuated. It's not very visible, but it's not the perfect square wave that we had on the second channel where it was fine-tuned. So if you work in an office where you have a bunch of oscilloscopes but very few probes because half of them already broke and the other half has just moved around from one equipment to the other, always make sure that the probes are correctly compensated before using them to make any sort of measurements. Otherwise you could end up with incorrect measured values. So all in all, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos and see you next time. Bye bye.